Welcome back to Airport Operations. Now, let's talk a little bit about airport lighting. An important part of airport lighting is flying into the runway at night. Well, how do you find it? It's going to fly around with a flashlight? <laughs> well, it has to be a pretty bright flashlight and that's not very effective or safe. Instead, the runways have lighting systems and we refer to these as ALS, Approach Lighting Systems. Take a look at this one. This is an approach lighting system. You see the approach lights leading to the runway. Just before the threshold, you see those bright red lights. You see bright lights for the threshold, and right beyond the threshold, you see the landing portion of that runway brightly lit. Okay? At night, runways along their edge will have bright white lights. Here's an example of that. If it's a tower-controlled airport, the control tower operator will turn these lights on and off for you. What if I'm going to one of those non-towered airports in the middle of the night? How do I turn the lights on and off? Well, if you remember, we talked about one of our resources being the chart supplement. In the chart supplement, you're going to find pilot-controlled lighting. Now, your flight instructor will work with you on this. But what's going to happen is you will click your microphone button on the appropriate frequency three or five times. The number of times you click that mic button will determine how bright those lights go. So that's pretty cool. You're actually in control of that. That's called pilot control lighting or PCL for short. On these uh, airports, the taxiways are also lit. Now, if they were the same color as the runway, it would be quite confusing. Where runways have bright white lights along their edge, taxiways have bright blue lights along their edge. Besides approach lighting systems, and runway and taxi lights. Airports also have what we call beacons, airport beacons. At night, the airport beacon is turned on and it rotates, and they can be seen from a long way away. Now, these beacons are color-coded. For example, at New Smyrna Beach Airport in Florida, we are a civilian airport on land. A civilian land airport has a white and green beacon. The beacon rotates and from a long way off, I can look in the direction of New Smyrna, I can see this uh, green and white rotating beacon and I can identify the location of the airport. Water airports are common in Florida as well as other parts of the country. Well, landing on water and landing on a hard tarmac are two different things. What if I'm in a seaplane and I'm looking for the water airport? I see the green and white beacon and I say, no, that's a land airport. Water airports are white and yellow. Now, in northern Florida, up around Jacksonville, we have a lot of military presence and we have a lot of military airports. I might be flying up there looking for a civilian land airport and instead I see a beacon, sure enough, it's green and white, but as I look at it, I see, wait, there's two white flashes for every green flash. That is a land airport, but it's not civilian, it's military. And then finally, if I see a beacon that is flashing white and yellow and green, that's a heliport. That's a landing spot for helicopters. Now, in addition to those beacons, at a control towered airport, the controllers may have a light gun up in the cab. And that literally is a bright spotlight that's handheld and they point 
this light gun to the airplane and they'll give the airplane light signals for control. Well, why might we use that? The light gun signals are used day or night in the event of radio failure. Now, study this at EPIC's online school and with your flight instructor. These light gun signals are the same signals but with different meanings if you're taxiing on the ground or flying in the air. So that's an important distinction. All right. Then finally, as we talk about airport lighting, we also have lighting to help guide the pilot down the correct approach angle. Now, we don't just fly into any old airport at any old approach angle. We don't want to come in too steep. We don't want to come in too shallow. And there's lighting systems to help us with that. There's three particular ones we want to talk about. The first one is the VASI, V-A-S-I. This means Visual Approach Slope Indicator. Now, there's two diagrams of the VASI here. On your left, you see what we call the three-bar VASI. There's the far bar, the middle bar, and the near bar. The near bar is closest to the threshold. If all three of them are red, I'm too low on that glide path. If all three of them are white, I'm too high on that glide path. Now, what if the top two are red or the top one is red? Then I'm very close to the glide path. Well, why are there three? Well, the reason there's a three-bar VASI is because some aircraft approaching this runway might have very long fuselages, like a, um, a DC-8, an airliner with a long body. As they fly down this approach path, the pilot, because of that long body, may be sitting slightly higher on that glide path in the approach. In that case, this pilot is looking for a single red and two whites, and that is known as the upper glide path. If you're flying with me in a 172 and we have a shorter body, we're going to be looking for two reds and one white. We're going to be flying on the lower glide path. Now, older VASI systems like this one just have two bars, the near bar by the threshold and the far bar. Once again, all red, too low, all white, too high. The upper one red, the lower one white, you are right on the glide path. Now there's an old memory aid for this one, and it goes like this. White over white, you're too high, red over red, you're dead. Red over white, you're all right. That's the old VASI system. Okay, one that you're going to see maybe a little more frequently these days is called a PAPI. So, what's that? Something my grandfather invented or maybe an Italian chef? No, it is the Precision Approach Path Indicator. Slightly different than a VASI, because the PAPI is four lights horizontally. And the PAPI is really rather intuitive. If they're all red, what do you think? Yep, you're too low. If they're all white, yeah, very intuitive. I'm too high. If one of them is red and three of them are white, I'm just a little too high. If three of them are red and one of them's white, uh-oh, I'm starting to get low. Now, two red, two white, side by side, like you see here, you're right on the glide path. So here's a couple review questions for this segment of the lesson. Which one of these VASI, this three-bar VASI,
is a 172 on the glide path. Which one of these signs is giving the exact location of a runway?